So I welcome all of you on this Sunday morning, a time when we gather, although not together in one place, still together nonetheless. And we acknowledge that as we gather, we do so on Williams Treaty territory, which is the traditional territory of the Chippewas and Mississaugas in this area. So let us enter more deeply into worship as we hear our prelude. Thank you, Joanne. Just a few announcements this morning. Just a reminder that uh, church office, Lorna is here on Friday mornings. I'm here a little bit, usually Wednesdays, and uh, hopefully with all of the other things in the world reopening a bit, um, I'll be able to feel comfortable being back here more often. Our church YouTube channel is continuing. Bible study. We meet Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and uh, we do do a hybrid version so please be in touch if you'd like to join us. There is a new link and uh, we were having some issues with the old one so we have started a new link to bring us all together on Wednesdays. Just a reminder your annual report if you are a committee chair or secretary responsible for the report from your committee they need to be in by today. 
so that we can make sure that the report book is ready to go out before the meeting, which annual meeting will be on February the 6th, 1 o'clock, by Zoom. And the link was in the bulletin, and the bulletin is posted on our website, so I invite you to go there if you are in need of the link. The minute for mission that was in our bulletin and is on the website as well uh, talked about some of the emergency response work that we do through the Mission and Service Fund. Broadview subscriptions are uh, due shortly, so if you're uh, interested in subscribing or need to continue your subscription, please contact Dorella. The church envelopes for 2022 are available and uh, you can arrange to pick yours up through Lorna. And as always, we thank those who are able to continue to give and uh, continue to support our ministry in this place and beyond. Thank you for giving. And now, the prophet Isaiah said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We remember this each time we light our Christ candle, the symbol and reminder of God's light that is always in and within us, always there inviting us to notice. And as this light shares its flame with us, may we do so with the world. join in our call to worship. We gather to worship God. We gather to hear the words of faith. We gather at God's call. The Spirit of God is within and around us. The Spirit draws us toward the heart of God. Let us pray together. When we gather in community, loving God, we strive to be aware of the joys and frustrations of those with us. We take note of the gifts and talents of our community and its members and encourage all to grow and use them. We will take the love of Christ into our hearts and then live it to those who most need it, today and every day. Amen. Our hymn of praise, In Christ There Is No East or West. Often Joanne surprises me with which tune we're using for a hymn. I didn't grow up using that tune for In Christ There Is No East or West. This morning, Erla has um, graciously offered to be our scripture reader, and so I invite you to listen to the Old Testament reading. This morning, the, the Bible reading is from Nehemiah. Persia has conquered Babylon. An edict from the Persian king Cyrus permits Jewish exiles to return home. The people now gather near one of the gates in the walls of Jerusalem to hear the prophet Ezra reading from Leviticus. He reads in Hebrew 
and priestly assistants translate and interpret it. Various verses from chapter 8 in, in Nehemiah. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand and the ears of all the people who were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people and when he opened it, all people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God and all the people answered, Amen, Amen lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Thank you, Erla. Our hymn before story time, All Things Bright and Beautiful, and we're going to sing the chorus after every verse.
what I had for story time this morning fit in the box. So I've got the story time box this morning. Just a couple of things in it. Not sure if you can tell what it is. Hoping it shows up against me here. You may have guessed, you may have not. It's a broken heart. Two halves. Jesus, when he preaches his very first sermon and reads scripture at home in his home synagogue or his home church, he says that he was brought to do some things. That in fact, he is called by God to make things better. That he's going to help those who are feeling oppressed or feeling like things are always against them or no one cares or that the things that are happening to them are things that will always make their lives difficult. And one of the things that ultimately is said in the passage that Jesus reads although it's not in the passage you're going to hear today, is that he's come to, bri- to bind up the brokenhearted. He's there to preach and proclaim to the oppressed, to bring sight to the blind and allow the lame to walk, but also to bind up the brokenhearted, to bring things back together. Jesus wanted us to help bring things back together, to encourage and support one another, to help each other do the best that we can in everything we do so that God's love is shown and that no one feels like they've been left out. They have no more broken hearts in the world. That's not always an easy thing for us to do. But it's the little things that can matter. Jesus did big things, and he was called to do big things. We're called to do little things, the things that we can each do every day. Normally, I would tell you to give someone a smile, but usually they can't see it behind the mask. But your eyes will crinkle up so they may know. And sometimes it's a simple hello instead. It's helping when you see somebody who needs a little extra hand or an extra foot, if you will, sometimes. It's all those little things that we do to help around the house or to help around school or just to be a presence that is encouraging, that lets others know that things, as bad as they may be, will be better and that we try to help make each day a little bit better for one person so that we bind up the brokenhearted and together we move forward in love. That's what we're called to do when the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And this morning, I've gone back into the archives of our videos, and Karen Nickel and Janet Ward are going to share as the deer pants.
Thank you, ladies. We, uh, we have some new music in the works, but uh, it takes some practice, and doing that safely can be a challenge sometime. And then we'll have to book some times to uh, get recording done again. Sometimes safely is the issue. So uh, stay tuned. There will be more. So let us share in our responsive psalm this morning. It is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the vault of the sky reveals God's handiwork. One day speaks to another, and night shares its knowledge with night. And this without speech or language, their voices are not heard, but their sound goes out to all the lands, their words to the end of the earth. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from under the canopy, like an athlete eager to run the race. Its rising is at one end of the sky, it runs its course to the other, and there is nothing that is hidden from its heat. God's law is perfect, refreshing the soul, God's instruction is sure, giving wisdom to the simple. God's precepts are right, rejoicing the heart. God's commandment is pure, giving light to the eyes. God's fear is clean, enduring forever. God's judgments are true, every one of them righteous. More desirable than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey, pure honey from the comb. By them is your servant warned, for in keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern unwitting sins? O oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get the better of me. Then shall I be clean and innocent of great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O God, my strength and my Redeemer. And Erla is going to share with us the Gospel lesson. Jesus has been tempted by the devil in the wilderness to misuse his power for his personal benefit, for worldly domination and for protection from God's plan, which we see as fulfilled on the cross. While in the desert, he was led by the spirit. Now he applies the words of Isaiah to himself. He is the predicted Messiah. He will bring freedom to the oppressed. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
and he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. interesting passages for us today. It makes us stop and think perhaps about how we do worship. Believe me, that's something that clergy have been thinking about for the last year, two years, as we've had to change how we do things sometimes. For those of us of a certain age, when we hear that we're going to be at the water gate, we perhaps don't think about the walls of a city. We perhaps think about something else. This particular water gate from Nehemiah was a good place, has a good story to tell. For it is those who have been exiled are coming home. They have found that home isn't what it was when they left. But they are also finding that in coming home, they're reconnecting with who they are and whose they are. And so Ezra opens the word to them and shares it with everyone. And he does so from early in the morning till about noon. I don't think most of us want to be in church that long, but you never know. And yet the people, it was as if they were hearing again for the first time, and they were transfixed by the word of God. They didn't understand everything they heard, and so there were those there to help explain what was being said and what was meant. But they all stood up to hear. In some churches, you'll find that the congregation stands when the gospel is read. It's not necessarily because we hear better, but it's about making that time different than the rest of the time. To stand up and to be very conscious of what it is that's happening in front of us and what we're hearing. That's what the people did at the water gate with Ezra that day. They stood up and paid attention. And it helped them continue on as they rebuilt their land, their cities, their lives, and their faith. Those people at the Watergate set the foundation 
for those who were gathering in Jesus' time. And by then, everyone couldn't be at the temple, so they had developed smaller buildings where groups of people could gather together in community within their communities. The synagogues, like our modern day churches, were the places nearby that people walked to, or a short ride on a cart or an ox or a donkey to gather with others of the faith. And each time they gathered, part of the scriptures were read, just as we do. It was a privilege to be given the honor of reading the scripture for the day. So hometown boy made good. When Jesus came home, he was given that opportunity. He has started his ministry, and people are starting to hear about him, including those in his hometown. And so when he arrives home, they ask him to be part of the service that day. And if you read the scripture, then you were the one who would teach on that scripture. I'm pretty sure many of you who offer to read scripture for us are glad you don't then have to prepare the sermon too. The interesting thing to note is that when Jesus had read the scripture and rolled the scroll back up, he sat down to do the teaching. Ezra stood high above the people to read the scriptures. Jesus had stood up to read the scripture. But then when he started to explain it, he sat down closer to the people. Those who were helping explain in Ezra's day were closer to the people out among the crowd. For while the word may be proclaimed widely and far out there and above us, When we talk about it, we bring it closer. So Jesus sat down, and the people sat around him to listen to what he had to say. We only hear the first sentence, really, of what it is he had to say that day, and next week we'll hear the rest. But he started by saying, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. He said, I'm the one we just heard about. I'm being called to do all these things. And the spirit is within me and asking me to do it. That was a pretty amazing claim to make. Ezra shared the gospel, shared the Torah, not the gospel, the Torah, shared the law of Moses with the people, and those were, things were explained to the people. Jesus takes upon himself the actual scripture and says, this is talking about me, not just to me, but about me. When we go home and make great claims for ourselves, we do so at risk. People may hear things differently because they think they know you, because they knew you when you were only so high. Well, that's what happened with Jesus, and yet he was willing to say, this is about me. The first words we hear Jesus preach in Luke's gospel are these ones. He puts it in a very present tense. Today this is happening. And when we read it, we hear that word and we know that today it is still happening. The spirit is still at work in our world. 
The Spirit is still calling people to make the proclamations that were listed in Isaiah's scripture that day. There are many times when we hear people say, I've been called to do something. Young people search for what it is they feel drawn to do. And sometimes you think you're going to do one thing, and you end up doing something completely different that you never even thought about doing before. That's the spirit at work guiding us to where we need to be. The Spirit was at work in Jesus when he was out in the desert just before he comes home. The Spirit was helping him figure out what it is he was going to do. What about us? What is the Spirit calling to each one of us? What is it that the Spirit is speaking to you about your life? We've all struggled with how to live out what we feel called to do at times. In the last few years, even more so perhaps. But we're being called to do something and we've been given the abilities to do that something. It may be something as simple as being a good listener or something entirely different than anything we ever imagined. We all have abilities. They get called on regularly. What is it the Spirit is calling you to do? For while Jesus claimed that the scripture from Isaiah was just about him, he never said that the Spirit only worked in him. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, and you are called to share the good news. Maybe it's with your mouth. Maybe it's with your ears, maybe it's with your eyes, maybe it's with your body. But you're called in some way by the Spirit and equipped by the Spirit to do what you're being called to do. And maybe it's in the future. Maybe it's, for the most part, been done. But as Jesus said, today, the Spirit is upon you and within you. Let the Spirit work. Go wherever it may lead. For today, you are called. Amen. In the calling, we are asked to bring our gifts and offer them and ourselves to God. And we do so with love because we are loved. We do so with expectation because we continue to receive God's blessings. We do so that others might see, hear, and experience the deep and abiding blessing and love of God. So let us celebrate what we give. pray together. Gracious God, accept our gifts given in love and gratitude. You have lit the way that we may see the needs. Our gifts are a reflection of your light to reveal your love to the world. Amen.
And as we come, as we do each week, we remember that we hold prayers, each one of us, within our hearts. We know that there are needs near and dear to us. And we know that our world has more needs than we can ever imagine. And yet God is there. And so we bring our prayers, put them together with all those of others, and bring them before God. Let us pray. Generous God, thank you for the Spirit. It filled Jesus, the Christ, and allowed him to do his ministry and mirror your love. Thank you that the Spirit is still at work in us and others today. There are those for whom the Spirit provides the ability to keep their balance in the midst of changes that cause others to waver this way and that. Others live out the love of justice, truth, and mercy, which inspires them to deeds beyond what is expected. There are those who never draw back from the misery and cries of their fellow human beings, and those whose faith looks for no escape from sticky situations of friction and misunderstanding. Still others are inspired by the same spirit to embrace awkward and hard-to-love people without stiffness or reservation, and those who forgive their enemies and go the second mile with no hint of self-congratulation. And yet still others, whose sense of humor leads them to laugh while we whine and lick our wounds, and those whose everyday love and hope counterbalances the avarice and cynicism of our society. God, we thank you for these spiritual guides. Even though we may not be able to fully emulate their character and deeds, let us at least have the grace to support them and pray for them. With our prayers, may we call upon the Spirit to encourage, guide, and support us in loving our neighbor. Through the Spirit, we pray for our nation, its politics, commerce, culture, education, mass media, and recreational pursuits, that self-interest, injustice, arrogance, and deceit may not have dominion over our people and leaders. We pray for our international neighbors, that they may be governed wisely and compassionately. For the indigenous people of our land, the urban dwellers and rural communities, that they may all have courageous and wise leadership from within, and profound understanding and respect from without. For our young people in this century of abrupt changes and pervasive insecurities, that younger and older folk alike may be willing to learn from each other and that the fullness of life be found by both the eager and the afraid. For any members of this community or congregation, for those among family or friends who are in dire straits today, that according to their bewilderment, pain, or heartbreak, they may find your grace sufficient for their needs. Here now, the prayers that lie upon our hearts. O oh God, through your Spirit, be with us, strengthen us, empower us to live your love today and always. Amen. At our closing hymn, Jesus Shall Reign.
It's time to leave this gathering of worship. So go forth as people filled with the Spirit's passion. Go forth as the Spirit guides you. Go forth unafraid to share the gifts the Spirit inspires. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep each one of you, now and always. Amen. And I invite you, as you are willing and able, to unmute your microphones so that the people of God who are gathered together may say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. the light has come. Thanks, Mary Jane.